Hi. Hi. <laughs> so we'll start with a question I want you to think about for one second before you answer. Okay. Which is, <clears throat> how are you really doing? Well, Today? Un under, <laughs> underline up, whatever way you understand the question. Well, I'm doing well. Um, you know, it's been a long day. I rushed over here, so I'm just I'm feeling a little bit anxious, but I'm excited to see you. I'm excited to shoot this with you, you know, how much we go way back, so I'm feeling good. A bit nervous. <laughs> That's normal, it seems with a lot of A guests little bit nowadays. nervous. Yeah, there's so many more people than I thought there would be. <laughs> and I was told that becoming this, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but a, a person who makes women cry. I've heard. Apparently. <laughs> Um, but how are you doing as, as Mona? Not I'm doing good. I mean, you know, for me, I feel super excited for 2020. I've made a lot of changes over the past year. Like, I think 2019 for me was like a year of drastic changes and growth as well. And a lot of reflection. Um, so I'm excited. I think, you know, there's a lot for me to do this year. I have a lot of goals, um, but I'm feeling excited. I feel, I feel good. I don't know why, maybe because it's a new decade and like I'm like new, new decade, new me, but I do feel like this year so far I'm on the right track and I feel like, you know, there's so much that I'm doing already and I'm taking the right steps to get to where I really want to go, where I feel like last year there was so much of me putting off things that I wanted to do for myself and I think I'm being a bit more selfish right now and I like it. I recently spoke about being selfish. Um and some people didn't like that word that really? they said it's a bit, uh, it has a negative connotation to it. Mm -hmm. But I, of course, I didn't mean it in that way. Yeah. It was more selfless. They're selfless and they're selfish and they're self-love. Mm -hmm. And I like self-love. Self-love yeah. is similar to selfish, I would say. It can, it can navigate across the same circles. Yeah. And I was telling people, if you don't take care of yourself, yeah. it's very difficult to take care of people around very. you properly. Completely. I, I totally agree with you. And I think before I used to hate the word selfish and I used to be like, oh my God, no, I want to be this selfless Mother Teresa, like this person who gives back to everyone. And I was so like afraid of making myself a priority. But I feel like this year I'm like, no, you've got to make yourself a priority, especially if you want to be the best version of yourself for the people you love so much. And even even for the world, like you can't give back the most in the best way possible if you don't start with yourself first. So it's not, a, it's not about just like making the world revolve around you and having a big ego. No, of course not. But it's about making sure that you're doing the things that count more and um, making sure you're feeling satisfied. So this year is like a big year of self-reflection, satisfaction, and making sure that everything I do is actually purposeful because I feel like for me, I've always been a hardworking person, but I think I got caught up in just like the hamster wheel of life and like working so hard and making sure that I think I got happy seeing myself work so hard, but it's like, no, work smart and make sure it's purposeful. And then your impact is so much bigger than working 18 hour days, you know? Mm. So I'm, I'm trying to be a little bit more strategic with myself because then I'm better for everyone. How old are you now? I'm 34. Do you think you're a people pleaser? Um, I love people. I love making people happy. I love giving to people. But I'm definitely not a people pleaser. Like if I have to give it to people straight and tell them like when they're acting out of line or if I have to give them some advice that might, you know, maybe not make them feel the right way, I'd rather give it to people straight than make people think I'm just saying yes. I'm definitely not a yes woman. You know, for me, I'm like, I have to keep it real, you know, so. Would you tell somebody? Tell somebody what? Straightforward and frank what you think. Yes. Because if, if I had to assume, which <laughs> I don't like Especially if I to. love people, you know, I mean. Yeah, but I'm, that's the thing. You love people. Yeah, I do. So it goes hand in hand with a lot of people who don't want to disappoint someone. So they tell them what they expect them to want to hear. Yeah. So if you love people, that doesn't mean you're a straightforward person. It, it, it can mean, or it can mean that you're just saying it. You're mm -hmm. saying what you think they want to hear so that you don't disappoint the people you care about. I think it's all in the delivery. And I used to be really hard, like it used to be really difficult for me to like confront people, um, depending on who it was. Like with Huda and my closest friends, my family, I would always give it to them straight. Like if I was so close to a person, like there'd be no way that I would ever tell them, you know, 
yes just because. It's like, because I love you, I'm going to tell you that's wrong, or because I love you, I'm going to say I disagree with you. And I think it's so important to surround yourself with people who are going to do that because most people are yes people, and they're just like, I'm not going to waste my time giving myself a headache to tell you you're doing something that's wrong. But if somebody loves you and they genuinely care about you, they're going to tell you, and yes, you shouldn't do that. And it's all about the delivery, right? Like, I don't believe you should go and yell at somebody or go embarrass them in front of like thousands of people or hundreds of people or even a, a circle of friends. Like, do it privately, do it in a nice way. You know, sometimes you just, like, I've had a friend who told me, like, make a shit sandwich, <laughs> put some nice things and some shitty things and then some nice things again. And just, the party. Yeah, mm. you know, like, deliver it in a nice way. Like, be thoughtful, be considerate of their feelings, but be honest and be real, you know? So I think it's, so important. Definitely um, not a peaceful pleaser, no. Because I, honestly, Muna, I would have assumed, and I don't like to assume, that you're, you would be. Maybe not, I make not people as happy. Cutthroat. Okay, so. Like I would say, Huda seems more straightforward if I would just, from the brief that I know she's about. She's very about straightforward. You. Yes. <laughs> I uh, mean, Huda. And I'm not is, saying who's right or wrong, yeah. I'm just saying a style. You seem more very PR versed. You know PR-versed. how to massage an ego here. I'm and diplomatic. Talk yes, diplomatic maybe is one you word. You know, um, but I definitely, for the people close to me in my life, and especially my colleagues and my team, like I have to tell them when I think something's wrong. Like I can't. I feel like I would do a disservice if I didn't tell them something was wrong. Mm. And I think a long time ago, maybe my former self used to be a lot more careful with who I would say things to. Like I would only keep it more real and more straightforward with like my closest friends, but people I wasn't very close to, I would never say anything. And even some of my colleagues or my employees, I wouldn't say things. But now I realize like, if you keep shoving things under the rug because you don't want to hurt somebody's feelings, like my intentions were good. Maybe I didn't want to like hurt someone's feelings about something, but I would put things under a rug and then you have a mountain (laughs) and then you have a volcano and it erupts and then you end up having to fire someone or they end up quitting because they're they realize they're like out of place or they don't even know what they're doing. So I think after a lot of self-reflection, I realized you have to be not confrontational, but you have to tell people how it is all the time. And it shouldn't just be the people you care about in your house. It should also be the people that you see, you know, tell them in a nice way and, you know, just be gentle with your approach. That's why I asked you about your age. I asked because I would have assumed, again, I should stop assuming, (laughs) but it was a progression for Mona. You evolved from maybe a, yeah. a people pleaser, but you started to realize it doesn't really mm. work in business. It's not doing yeah. anybody any good, especially yourself, yeah. if you keep it inside. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, I think for my family and my closest friends, I've always been a preacher. I'm like, if I see something wrong, I'm going to say it, and you're going to hear about it till you change, and I'm very persistent. Like, I will not shut up. Like, I can't. For me, it's just like if I see someone doing something wrong, I just can't stop talking about it. Otherwise, I have to like not be your friend or not be close to you because I just can't. It hurts to see someone do things they shouldn't do. But I think in terms of like other people, like my, my employees and my colleagues and people I wasn't so close to or that I didn't feel close enough to tell them how I felt or I felt scared to like express, you know, um, negative feedback, them, it took me time to actually get to a place where I could say it in a non-emotional way and just a constructive way and understand that you know giving someone feedback doesn't have to be a negative thing. It's a very positive thing and now I embrace it. Mm. Now like as soon as I see somebody do something that's wrong, I'm like, I make a note so I make sure I go back to it at some point and I put it on my to-do list and like talk to them about this because I don't want mountains building up under my rug. Like I, no, I don't have time for that. Let's rewind. How was your childhood? My childhood, for the most part, like from what my memory, my perception of my childhood was very positive. Um, I grew up super close to Huda, you know, maybe a little too close. I think I did develop like what I understand now to be like codependency, where I always wanted to be beside her. I always wanted to go wherever she went. And it was partially because my parents were, you know, they were immigrants in the States, so they were kind of scared. And they were like, you know, if you go anywhere, you have to take Huda, or you have to go with her and her friends. So it was always like I had to be in her shadow almost. And I've realized recently, I'm like, holy shit, (laughs) I'm codependent. Like, that's not a good thing. It's Mm. not a positive thing. Like, my parents never pushed me to be an individual. They were like, oh, go with Hitta wherever she goes. So I think that I had no clue until recently, until I really started to dig deep into myself. And I was like, this is me just trying to be comfortable because I'm like in my sister's, you know, I'm beside her. But I'm trying to change that. 
Mm. And I'm trying to be myself and my own, I'm trying to be an individual and I'm trying to, you know, say yes to more things that are not involving her. Because before, if I got an opportunity to be like, I have to do it with it, I'm not doing it. And if she got an opportunity to be like, I want to do this with you, I always wanted to be like a pair. And um, I think that's, you know, disservice to myself. It's also probably annoying to her because <laughs> like I've always just wanted to be around her. But we were super, super, super close growing up, like inseparable. We slept in the same bed you know, forever, you know, and um, we did everything together. Till now, we do everything together still. <laughs> it's funny how yeah. you answered that question and she took a chunk of the answer. But yeah, the, exactly. Now I'm curious about I, your parents. How's the relationship with your parents? With me and my parents? Mm. Um, honestly, with my dad, it's amazing. Like, I've always been daddy's girl. Um, he's like one of my best friends and he's actually... You know, he reminds me a lot of Pitta too. It's so funny because they're my favorite people in life. And it's because they're both the polar opposite of me. You know, my mom and I have a great relationship, but we're so similar, like to the point where we kind of rub each other the wrong way sometimes. And like, I see things in her that I see in myself that irritate myself. I'm like, oh, you take forever to make decisions. Oh, like you're slow. Like, oh, pick it up, you know, like be more aggressive, you know. But um, she's also super calm and patient and loving. And that's like things I love about myself. So. I've learned now to appreciate her and all her beauties and um, just have a better relationship with her. I think before we didn't have the best relationship growing up. She's amazing. I don't want to say I had a bad relationship with her, but I wasn't close to her. And I think now just understanding her more and just thinking of her more as a human and not like my mom, I'm being a bit more soft with her and I'm like, okay, I'm building our relationship better together. But my dad, I think we like literally like this, like I didn't leave to study in the US because I didn't want to leave him. I was like, I'm not leaving you. You know, when Hedda left and studied, I was like, we're just kind of, yeah, he's Dr. Daddy Cool. He's, he's the coolest guy ever. Like you, have you met him? Yes, he's very briefly. Awesome, right? <laughs> I, from your social media, I can tell uh, briefly yeah. that he has a lovely energy. He does. He's got you this know. like contagious, yeah, thank you. And even my mom, by the way, like I don't want to say anything about my mom because she's one of the most beautiful humans on but the But she's planet. not very visible online, correct? She doesn't like to be, yeah. Yeah, she's that's more why like to herself I would remember your dad first. Yeah, she's, she's more shy and she likes to, you know, she's kind of more reserved and more traditional and everything. But my dad is like a character, like he is so amazing. I love him. I'm obsessed mm. with him. <laughs> yeah, good luck Yeah, to you should person. have him on your podcast. Yeah, one day. <laughs> Everybody, by the way, refers to AB Talks as podcasts. Because well, you're it's talk, long, you're talk. it's a talk, I guess, yeah. You should have um, here. How's your relationship with money? Um, good, I think. I think it's good. It's good now. I think, you know, for the longest time, because me and Huda, we grew up, me and my family, we grew up very humble. You know, my father, um, he left Iraq at a very young age, and he had to leave on a scholarship to kind of build himself because he came from a pretty poor family and um, a family of 10, sorry, don't, <laughs> don't judge me for not knowing. He had five sisters, he has five sisters and he had two brothers, one passed away, um, but he was the eldest and he had to really help build himself on his own and he also helps his family till now. Um, but we had very humble beginnings and I always thought money was something that was so hard to achieve and something that, you know, would almost be impossible to, you know, master, master like your financial world. But now I look at it very differently, um, very, very differently. I think the, my perception of money really changed after having some success with Head of Beauty and actually seeing it more of just not an exchange, but as it's actually, it's amazing to spend money because you're giving back to the economy. Before I used to feel so guilty because my parents always raised me to like, if you have extra money, donate it. They were always like, even when we didn't have much money, they always donated everything extra that we had. So I had that kind of perception of like, I felt almost not selfish or like, I felt very bad when I spent on myself. But now I'm like, okay, if I'm buying this bag that goes to this owner who employs these jobs, and it's like a circle, you know? And I think that holding your money is not the right thing to do. I think giving it, donating it to right people or even spending it on things that just make the economy go around is a good thing. Mm. You know, so, yeah, I, I actually see it more of like a way to circle work and, you know, make the world go around and the world flow. So, yeah, <laughs> in a nutshell, if, some, if I ramble, tell me, please, because I, I no, can go no, on and on all. forever. I so want just, you to feel free. Yeah. Um, if somebody said you, your family 
our new money family that you can buy class that mm-hmm. they're new to money mm-hmm. and they have now suddenly a lot of it and that's yeah. why they're in brand that's why they're in private jets that's why they have a big house i don't know how your house looks like but yeah. i'm just yeah. throwing it out there how would you respond to that label i think it's fine i think we are like you know for my mom she did come from money um, and I think she grew, she raised us with a lot of class. And I don't think it's about how much money you have in your bank account or even the house you live in. Um, but we are new money, you know, and there's nothing to be ashamed of. I have zero shame. I'm actually more proud of myself because I'm like, I worked hard for it. I earned it. No one passed it down to me. Like, this is something that I should be proud of. I think it's very backwards to be like, oh, I'm old money and I should be snobby because I inherited this from my ancestors. Who cares? Like, honestly, that's so backwards. Um, so I'm, I have no shame on that. And I think that you can have zero dollars in your bank account and be the classiest person on the planet. You can be a person cleaning the streets and be so classy. And you can have a Ferrari and be like zero class. Correct. Does not, like money does not equal class at all. It's your manners. It's how you treat people. It's, you know, your, the way you look at people, the way you make people feel. I think that defines class. Yeah. A rich person. It doesn't matter what you wear either. I'm like... A rich person who mistreats the help mm-hmm. or a waiter is not a classy person. Not at whatsoever. all. Whatsoever. And a lot no. of them are there. Yeah, no, not at all. And I think they're completely not related. You mm. know, people, they probably, they think that, but it's completely unrelated. Okay, this is uh, an interesting question. Uh, and I think it plays with people's heads. Mm. Is it safe to say that you're the brains behind the Huda Beauty? No, it's not true. I think that Huda Beauty was something that my family worked really hard for, and it was a joint effort between Huda, Alia, Chris, my dad. I don't want a political (laughs) answer. I want what you truly believe. Oh, no, this is real. This is truly real. I mean, I think we all add value in such different ways. I think that I had a bit more business experience when we first started, because I had just started up a few businesses on my own, so I already had some trial and errors, and I learned. But I think Huda is definitely the visionary for the brand like that a hundred percent she is that creative incredible visionary for for the dna of huda beauty and to be honest she's developed into an incredible ceo and leader um and no one can ever take that away from her she's she's amazing and my brother-in-law helped a lot christopher helped so much and he helps so much today and my sister alia as well she's she's amazing like she was the first full-time person working with Hedda. You know, I was more like helping with a lot of just the advice and like what to do and next steps and like strategy, but I had other things going on, so I couldn't be with her full-time. So I think that people always like to say, oh, that's the smart one or that's the whatever one, but no, we all worked really hard and it was a joint effort. And today it's a team effort. We have this incredible team and it's not fair to give one person the credit, Hmm. you know? And I think that's something that will never you know, it's in every company, right? Like every company, one person gets the credit if they're the face of the brand or if they're the CEO or the COO or whatever, and they'll say that person's not, you know, people sometimes think Hud is not smart because she's so beautiful and she's so into beauty, but she works so hard and she's so dedicated and she pushes herself every single day and she pushes us every day. So I think it's not fair to give anyone that title of being the brain. Hmm. Although we used to call ourselves Pinky in the Brain when we were little. We are like, we're going to take over the world one day and we like pretend we're Pinky in the Brain. But that, that's, yeah. um, that's interesting to think about. Did you ever think this can be global? Um, honestly, the intention was always global, like from day one. And that's, I think, number one, because we're both, we're the family, we're very global. You know, my parents are from Iraq, but we were born and raised in the States. And then we lived in Dubai. And then, you know, we traveled a lot so it was always like where do we belong i don't know i still don't know (laughs) i'm like i don't feel like i'm from iraq i don't feel like i'm american i don't feel like i'm from here you know i'm just this global person and i think that's happening a lot now especially with people who've lived in other countries and their roots are from somewhere else so i think number one we had a global mindset ourselves because we didn't feel like we fit in a box and then number two being a brand that was born out of social media, Instagram is global. You know, our followers were global. Our, you know, the blog was global. So we've always had a very, very, um, well, for everyone who wants the product, who wants the brand. And even though our distribution started regionally, it was like we always intended, we have to get this to everybody who loves mm. our brand and loves Cake Face. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Um, it can be. I'm, I'm a family business with mm-hmm. my brothers and now with Harif. Mm -hmm. specifically Um, and I think a very typical question 
a lot of people will ask is how challenging it is to work with friends mm -hmm. or with family. Uh, that question I'm throwing generally at you, which yeah. obviously you get a lot. But at the same time, I, I'm there. So I know kind of in mm -hmm. my experience how that works. Uh, personally, I'm against, for example, couples working. Really? The same. <laughs> personally. I think yeah. it's very tricky if, um, if I was married mm -hmm. and uh, I have my wife in the same company. Yeah. And I say something about her proposal mm. to expect her to be jolly at home at night. Very difficult because it's That's human true. beings are emotional creatures. Mm -hmm. No matter how professional you are, she's gonna be like, she'll have a grudge. Kick you. Yeah, the food sleeping. will be uncooked <laughs> or right. something. You know, I think or that there will be attitude, etc. Yeah, no, totally. Um, so I find that interesting. Yeah. How how do you work that dynamic? Yeah. You know? Well, family, um, you know, because I've done both. I've had businesses with friends. I've had business with family. I've had business with strangers. Um, but I do think having business with family is the best if you can make it work. Mm. Um, and it has not been an easy ride at all. Like there were many times um, throughout my career with Eddie Beauty where I was like, screw this. I am leaving you. Like nothing is worth it. I don't care like what we're building. Not worth it. Mm. Um, but we had to kind of like understand each other more and learn boundaries and learn how to respect each other more and also understand our personalities better because I think that, you know, even though we lived our entire lives together, I never fully understood Hada or Alia or even Chris. Like there were certain things that I just didn't get because when you're so close, I think you, you are so blinded, you know what I mean? When you're far away, like I'd probably understand my friends better in some ways than I'd understand like the people closest to you because you're so judgmental and you have these preconceived notions of who they are because of the past where they probably evolved a million times and you're just not, you're not accepting it. So I think that first it took a moment of a stepping back and like seeing each other for who we are now today. And then also just appreciating our differences because for the longest time it was like very difficult, especially I'd say with me and Hedda together, we used to fight a lot, like daily sometimes. And sometimes it'd get embarrassing because we'd be in front of people and you know, it was not a good look, but now I'm like, I love that you're different. I love that you challenge me. I love that you are, you know, you see this in people. I see that in people, you know, because we, we challenge each other and then together we make a better decision than if we both thought the same. And mm. I actually think having such different personalities makes magic happen. It makes diamonds. It puts pressure on everyone. Um, and the funny thing is we did a personality test. Um, me, Chris, Ali, and Hedda, and every single one of us had a different personality out of the four. So it's like we really, like we completed the circle of these personalities and we're like, that's probably why this works so well. Would you say though it's tricky? Like now you have you and a sister, you and the other sister. I don't know if your father is also part of the organization. He helps. He's not like full time because yeah. you know, he's like 76. But then Hoda, but husband. Yes. How, like, how do you avoid that you fight with Alia <laughs> and then you're okay when you have a dinner together or yeah. Huda has, gets in a debate. Do you separate family members have completely different roles so that they don't intersect and that's mm -hmm. a way to mitigate mm -hmm. conflict or they're in the same departments too? We all have different roles, but they do intersect. Um, it's just inevitable because we're all this, you know, we're all trying to steer the ship together. Um, you know, so it's, it is challenging, but Huda and Chris have very different roles. I think for them, it was the most important to separate the two of them where Huda is purely on brand, um, leadership of the company, uh, marketing, PR, uh, visuals, where Chris is purely operations and supply chain and all of that. So he's, that's what he takes care of. So I think the two of them being completely separate was very important for their marriage. Um, but for the rest of us, we kind of intertwined. Um, and I think it's okay, in all honesty, like, I think the, the only person I used to really argue a lot was with Huda um, because of our polar opposite personalities. But for the rest of us, we, we do argue, but I think it's healthy. Mm. And yeah, it's life, you know? I'm not gonna say that sometimes it didn't come home with us. Like there were times where I wouldn't talk to Huda for days. And we'd be like, you know what? I'm not your sister anymore. <laughs> like we're not talking and like, it's over. <laughs> Mm. But of course not. Like she's probably the person I'm closest to in this world, you know. So it's just uh, it's hard. I'm not gonna say it's easy. Mm. It's hard every day. Okay, forget work. Okay. Um, Yay. <laughs> yeah, you're used to talking about work. Yeah. 
do you think you're happy? I think I'm really content. Um, I think happiness is just, it's an ongoing process. Like you don't stay happy. Like once you reach happiness, you either keep it or you lose it. It's not something that you hold, yeah. you know, it's not something that you own, you know, so you can be happy one minute and sad the next minute. So right now I'm happy because I'm here with you and we're having a good conversation and it's nice, um, but it's something that never lasts. You have to work to keep it, you mm. know, so I'm content. And I think that, you know, I've, I'm really happy with where I am in life right now because I'm feeling good and I'm getting to know myself better and I feel like I've made progress. Like for me, progress makes me happy. Like if I feel like I'm, and I think it makes everyone happy. You know, for me, I've always been, I don't know if it's just every human, but I feel like the, the feeling of seeing myself go from here to there is just, it's a good feeling. I feel like I'm doing something with myself. So in that respect, I'm happy. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, Mona, you, you carry a smile a lot. Thank you. <laughs> uh, a good smile. Thank you. Um, although you've seen and experienced shitty moments, sadness, mm -hmm. I'm sure way more than I know and way more than you pleased to show the yeah. public. Um, so it's not like you're a person who was in a cocoon or mm -hmm. a bubble and everything is jolly and happy but you no. <laughs> your behavior and your demeanor is very positive mm -hmm. is very smiley is very outgoing and jolly yeah. cheerful thank you how do you manage to do that though <laughs> although you've seen difficult difficulty yeah i mean to be honest like i've started with self development since i was 13 years old you know i got into tony robbins at a really young age so it's like imprinted in my brain in my dna and it was because I went through a hard time. I moved from Tennessee to Massachusetts and I got really depressed. And I was like, oh, I don't have any friends. I don't know what I'm doing with myself. And I was like, I had to shed my skin and become somebody new. So I started reading on self-development. And like one of my greatest learnings I learned was like, you give what you get. So like if I give you happiness, I get it. You know what I mean? Mm. So like if I spread my, spot, my smiles and like happiness and love to people, I get it back. And it's like one of the best ways to feel happy most of the time is to give people happiness all the time. So I'm not going to say that I don't have hard times or there, I smile all day <laughs> like a psycho. No. Mm. Um, but when I'm around people, I genuinely feel so much happier. It's sometimes when I'm alone that I'm like, oh, now I have to think about things. <laughs> and like now I have to like, you know, I, I actually vibe off of people's energy. You'd say you're an extrovert. In some ways. In some ways, I'm an extrovert in terms of my love for people and I love being around people, but I think I'm more introverted with my thoughts. Like, I, I think you're quite private, although you wouldn't seem so to the, the public. Mm -hmm. I would think you're quite the private person and shy. I'm private and shy with my feelings. And I actually realized this recently because I was like, again, trying to like learn about myself. Um, I was, again, like just trying to explore myself and one thing I realized was, okay, I'm an extrovert when it comes to my love for being around people and I get energy off of people, but I'm an, introver I'm an introvert with my feelings and my thoughts and I actually think before I speak usually, mm -hmm. you know, like that I'm introverted. So I'm a mix between the two and yeah, I keep my, my intimate feelings very private and I keep my intimate life very private. Hmm. Except a reality show that doesn't count. <laughs> I don't know why you're do giving that. me crumbs <laughs> to jump on. Um, you said that when you went to Massachusetts, mm -hmm. it was depressing. Yeah. Is it depressing? You're saying depressing like I was really sad or I was actually depressed? I was really depressed. And even when I moved here, I moved the two times the big moves I had in my life was when I was 13, I moved to Massachusetts from Tennessee. And then when I moved from Massachusetts to Dubai, to Sharjah. Um, when I was 17, I had another like wave of like, oh my God, what am I doing? Like, this sucks. I have to make friends from scratch. I have to figure it out myself. And it was also like a lonely time because both times it was like, I wasn't in school with Oda. So like from 13, from when I moved to Tennessee to Massachusetts, she was in high school, I was in junior high. Then when I moved here, she was in uni and I was mm -hmm. in high school. So it was like, I didn't have her. And I was all alone and I had to start fresh. So I was like, oh, sucks. You but find it quite interesting how, and I don't mean it in a good or bad way, that she's a huge factor in your life, a I huge know. variable. It's I scary. Know. It like is it's a scary. Bit scary. And it's, 
Yeah. It's beautiful that, you know, siblings have such yeah. a strong bond and maybe a dependency. We're yes. lucky. Yeah. But at the same time, it's scary because you it put so scary. much into that relationship and dependency. It is. I mean, you know, there were times where we lived apart, like when she moved back to the States um, to be with Chris, you know, when they were together, they were just boyfriend and girlfriend then, but she didn't want to leave him and she moved back for him and I stayed. I decided to stay because I wanted to stay with my dad. Um, we lived apart for years um, from 2003 until 2008. So five years. Um, and that was weird. It's like for the first time I had to find my own friends and find my own self. Um, and in many ways I loved it because I was like, ooh, I get to be an individual and I get to pick my friends and I get to pick what I want to do. But I definitely missed her like crazy and I definitely feel more complete with her. I know that's weird. Um, and she also is an incredible sister. She's like, you know, Huda, Huda's tough and she's not the most like, I'm going to love you and cuddle with you if you have a problem. She's going to like tell you you fucked up and you're... You're stupid and you got to get your shit straight. Like she's going to give it to you mm. hard, but sometimes you need that in your life. Like I definitely appreciate what she's done for me and how she's advised me in certain ways, you know? And then if I want to hug, I'll go to Adia. Yeah. <laughs> That's the great thing about having multiple siblings. They all give you different things in different ways. So, mm. yeah. You said um, <clears throat> earlier that sometimes when the people are gone, mm -hmm. I have to deal with my shit. Finally, yeah. and I'm like, oh, I have to. Mm -hmm. Do you have a hard time de dealing with Mona? I, um, I don't know. To be honest, I, I love alone time. So like when I'm alone, I just I feel like some sort of calmness and I actually need alone time. And I, I realized this not recently, but like maybe four years ago that for my sanity and for my progression, I need a couple hours alone a day. And I know that sounds like a lot. but You need to be your own friend. I need my alone time. I need to also reflect and like understand my feelings and my thoughts because when I was just moving around 18 hours a day, working like crazy and never having space to just think, I feel like I never was in tune with my feelings. So I like being alone, but I think that it forces you to confront yourself and mm. be like, okay, what's going on? But I love it. I genuinely like, I'm like, ooh, what is going on? And I, I like to reflect. I like to journal. I like to... I could spend days just journaling by myself. Okay, right this moment, mm -hmm. how many handbrakes do you have up? Like, how reserved are you? I don't know. Do you feel like I'm reserved? No, I'm asking. I don't know. I feel like... Like, do I... you think you are politically correct? You know how to answer the questions? You're in control? Or you think you're letting go and being just Mona? I think I'm letting go. I think you I know am. How your body language completely changed after this question. I think I, because I'm just trying to gauge myself. Mm -hmm. I think I'm letting go. Like I don't feel, I don't feel like I'm telling you too much, mm. and I don't feel like I'm not. I don't feel like I'm holding back either. I feel like okay, I'm answering um, to the best that I can mm. right now. <laughs> how would you describe love? Love. Love for who? Your partner? Your family? Whatever or? one you want to say. Um, I think love is, is giving, it's showing love, it's supporting someone, it's making them feel special, it's making them feel important, it's caring more about them than your want or desire for them, you know, whatever that is, whether it's for your children, your family, your partner, whoever, it's like you need to, it needs to be selfless. That's something that I think needs to be selfless, because otherwise it's not love, it's lust. Hmm. Mm. Um, or it's selfish. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think a missing chapter in Mona's life is building a family? Um, it's missing. Yeah, I don't Bec have a family. I don't say it because I believe everybody should yes. be married. I don't yeah. believe marriage is for everyone mm -hmm. and I don't believe parenting is for everyone. Yeah. But I feel you'd be good at caring for, Thank you. for kids and yeah. bringing them up. You know, I love children and like ever since I was 18, I wanted to get married. Like I was that kind of girl who didn't ever even date till I was 18. And I was like, mom, just get me a husband. I want to get married. Like, I want to start having kids. And um, she introduced me to someone and I was like, no. <laughs> yeah. I was like, actually, I changed my mind. I'm going to try to find someone on my own. I'm not going to go mm. the arranged routes. And um, yeah, I think, you know, in all, in all honesty, I just haven't met the right person yet. 
and have I had the opportunity to get married? Sure, of course, but it wasn't the right people. So I've always just kind of held myself because I would rather wait and find the right person or just be single than be in a relationship where I'm not happy or, you know, we don't have the same values and I know it's not going to last. Um, so I just, I haven't found the right person yet. And um, yeah, it's hard. It is hard because, of course, I want to have a partner in life, but I also feel like, I don't know, I just haven't, haven't found the one. Your last relationship, I can say X. Yeah. Um, I knew this was coming. <laughs> I think it's, it's important, not, out of, yeah. not a gossip show. Yeah, of course. I yeah. think it's important to understand the, the mentality and the mindset mm -hmm. behind. You know, a powerful woman, independent woman, mm. can intimidate a lot of men. I don't know about your relationship, but yeah. any relationship and any man, mm. especially Arab men, I would say, are, are <laughs> extremely or can be. Yeah. intimidated because they have this perception I should be more successful or I should make more money I should mm. be the bread earner well, yeah. it doesn't work buddy anymore it, it right. can, it's, a, it's a team yeah I don't um, think that matters at all like, I'm not just like anymore, who yeah. cares exactly you know um, but I read from the research which <laughs> I got who did it <laughs> that you, you were very open <laughs> that you met through Tinder yeah which I thought was refreshing that somebody addressed the elephant in the room and they're like you know that's i have a friend actually who got married yeah I because they met friends through, too you know through tinder. tinder how like i was impressed that you were that open about it to be honest i mean i know i seem like polished but i'm an open book like i'm the kind of person like i very rarely hold back unless it's gonna get me in trouble legally <laughs> something but i'm not the kind of person to hold back i'm like i'm on tinder i don't care i know people think it's a an app just to screw around. That's not what I was on there for. If I'm honest, like I downloaded it maybe five years ago for the first time. And I was like, cause I just don't go out and I barely go out. So I was like, I'm not going to meet somebody at work. Cause most of the guys there are just, you know, no. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's either work or I'm home. I don't really go out much. So I was like, okay, I need to meet someone digitally. Mm. So I downloaded Tinder. It was a disaster. I met one person five years ago, and it was like a I'm disaster. I'm sure there are date. a lot of weirdos. Oh, so yeah. many weirdos! Yeah. Like so many weirdos, and it was definitely like just a guy who wanted to get down. And I was like, no, yeah. you know. And I deleted the app, and I downloaded it again, 2018, right before I met my ex. And I was like, okay, let me give this a try again, and let me have an open mind and an open heart. And to be honest, like he definitely was looking for something serious, and so was I. And it it was funny because I actually looked at my profile from before and I was like, this is why I'm meeting creeps. All my pictures were super face tuned, super materialistic, like very like blah, 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 boom. Like, of course, of course I'm gonna meet creeps. Like I was attracting, I, like, I'm, I have a background in PR, hello. It was like a billboard for yeah. an F boy, you know yeah. what I mean? Like a guy who just wants to mess around. And so yeah. I reworked it, I was like, put my PR hat on. Interesting. I was like, I wanna meet somebody who's down to earth and humble and like into something deeper. So I changed my pictures and I made them all like half of them with no makeup, half of them with like my belly hanging out. And I was like, I'm not going to face tune it. You know, he's right. got to like me, you know, and I put, I put the bio just very like deep and like cheesy, like me. I'm deep and cheesy. So, um, yeah. And then I met my ex and, you know, he was the right kind of person that I wanted in many ways. You know, he wasn't looking for something just to play around, but didn't work out because of so many other reasons. You know, we can get into it somehow, but I don't want to say anything that reflects badly on him, of course. Yeah. But, yeah. But I'm not yeah. on it anymore. <laughs> but is it, is it I've thought about going back on, but not yet. <laughs> I'm still like, oh, God. It's, it's hard. Relationships are hard, Mona. They are hard. I mean, I was thinking about it. Um, I think about it often. Mm -hmm. And I try to understand the psychology and all of that. And I think... Before, a hundred years ago, yeah. 50 years ago, the prerequisites or expectations out of a marriage were extremely different than today. For example, to make it easier, let's say our grand grandparents, when they looked to go get married, it was, I need a man for security because mm -hmm. I'm in a dangerous environment, right. to bring food, to mm -hmm. work, to travel with. So you see, there are requirements that those are the priority criteria, mm -hmm. right? Love and him giving me flowers, I don't give a shit about that. <laughs> Back then, yeah. today, 
I think women are extremely independent, powerful, yeah. smart. They travel easily, it's safer. Mm-hmm. Uh, they make sometimes more money even than the, the guy. Yeah. Uh, they, if they, in some countries, if they want to have kids, they can have kids alone. Thought about it. <laughs> so you see, there's so much. Yeah. And then what is left? The only thing that is left as a proper ki- criteria for a woman to even consider you is you better be a damn good partner or right. I don't even want you. So true. Other than that, you don't add to me. So true. So suddenly now a weak man is intimidated. Mm. A guy who doesn't have a strong personality or compatibility is intimidated because he can't offer anything that will impress that woman who's uh, financially independent mm. or, or whatnot. So yeah. all the focus and all the, the criteria becomes how compatible are you? Do you add to my life? Right. And if you're not great, sorry, you're out. So, true. so suddenly a relationship becomes extremely challenging if you can't be compatible on that as a partner, as a companion, Mm -hmm. which we didn't have 50 years ago. You're so right. I mean, I'm sure if that was the case, my parents probably wouldn't be married because they were not compatible in so many ways, but they stayed together because it wasn't normal for for people to get divorced. It wasn't normal to disagree with your husband. It wasn't normal to do all of this, but now um, times have changed and it's good and it's bad. It's good because I think people are happier in some ways. At least they're more themselves and they're feeling a bit more safe to express themselves. Or people were probably not very happy in the past and they probably didn't tell people about all the mental illness that they had and no one was even aware of it, you know. Um, but I think it's sad to see people giving up on each other so fast and, you know. That's um, the opposite side of the right, spectrum, yeah. yeah. Instant grat- gratification world. Mm-hmm. Right. But like now, being in your 30s, which I think is a beautiful period, because mm-hmm. we know the shit we like and what we don't. And it's we very true. Too. You filter. Fil- you very, filter friends, very, work, very true. people. Um, do you think you intimidate men? And that's why it can be challenging to find somebody who would appreciate you or not be intimidated or insecure around you? I don't know. I'm not sure. Like, it's a big question for me. <laughs> well because I'm so confused to be very honest like everybody's like oh you must have a line of guys waiting outside to ask you out and honestly no you're like what kind I'm like no I actually don't and people always tell me I'm intimidating or I give the impression that I'm taken or stuff like that but I'm actually super simple and I'm actually really traditional when it comes to relationships like I like the man taking the lead and I don't care doesn't mean he has to earn more money than me it doesn't mean he has to offer me fancy things or gifts because I can buy them myself, but it's like the simple things, like open mm. my door, you know, um, order me dinner, surprise me, and you take the lead on that. Like you you just be the man, like mm. be, you know, I, I think it's, it's something funny because a lot of people always say like, oh, he's such an alpha man because he's so loud and aggressive and like, Rrr, like a, a lion, but no, an alpha man is usually quiet and confident and he's just the pack builder, he's the leader, he makes other people feel safe and taken care of, you know? Mm. So I just, I like, sim- I'm super simple when it comes to relationships. I might be really complicated in other ways in my life when it comes to like the demands of my work and everything I do. But when it comes to relationships, I think what I would want, and I think what a lot of girls want who are working so hard is just like support, romance, like send me a playlist. You know what I mean? Take yeah. me to watch a cheesy movie that I know you hate, but you're taking that you're taking me for me, and like you're paying attention. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like mm. those kind of things mean so much more than like buying me a bag. I could care less for that, unless I know you saved for it and it was special and there was like so much put into it. You know, so I think love is simple, and it's like making someone feel loved, and that's only through giving and showing love. It's it's not a noun that you can give. It's something. It's a verb. You've got to do it. You know, and it's like happiness. You don't own it. You have to continue doing it. What are you afraid of? What am I afraid of? Oh, like weird phobias or like big fears? Whatever you understood. I mean, my phobias are really strange. Um, I'm afraid of fish and birds. <laughs> really? <laughs> I've gotten can you eat so much better. Fish? Yeah, I can eat them, but okay. I can't swim with them. Like, I get freaked out on the beach. Like, if I see a fish, I'll just run yeah. away. Yeah. But it's so weird because I'm totally fine with, like, a phobia. cheetah. Yeah, like okay. weird phobias. Mm. Um, and then birds, too. But they've attacked me before. So. Okay. Um, but big fears in life. Um, 
I mean, honestly, it's losing my loved ones, like losing my parents, losing people I love, you know. Um, and also time. I, I have a, a weird issue with time. Like, I feel very freaked out when, like, it's 2020 and I thought it was 2018. Like, that gives me, like, anxiety. And I'm like, oh, my God, where's the time going? Like, it freaks me out. You feel you're running out of time. It, it scares me with how fast things are moving. And sometimes I'm not feeling the days, you know? And I'm sure a lot of people feel that way. But it freaks me out. Like, I have this weird time issue. Hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't like time fa passing fast. Like, for me, that's, like, the worst thing. Yeah, I wish I can add hours to the 24. Me too. But I can't. Because <laughs> I'm not a big sleeper too. Like, I love sleeping, but I just don't yeah. give it enough time. Me either, yeah. I'm like five hours, if I'm lucky, six. Okay. If you were not afraid of anything, mm -hmm. what would you do today? If I'm not afraid anything. of anything. Not afraid of losing uh, reputation or security. Nothing, nothing. Uh, losing someone you love mm. or being upset with you. Nothing. You're not afraid of anything. Mm. If I'm honest, I'm not really, I don't feel like I'm not doing anything that I want to do except one thing, which I started last week. <laughs> so there is one thing that I was holding back on for a long time, and I did want to talk to you about this, but I am I'm starting my YouTube channel okay. where I want to be more vocal about things that I care about. And that was something I didn't do for years that mm. I wanted to. And again, it was, I think it was the codependency. I was like, could I want to do this with you? I was like, I really want to do this channel with you where we do things that are not always beauty related, but like other things. And I just was like, 2020, I'm doing it. And so I filmed my intro video last week. So I'll go up nice. soon, but I'm just going to do it. And um, I think it is breaking my comfort zone because I think for the longest time, I actually put myself in a box, even though I tell everybody not to do that. I was like, no, but if I do a channel, it has to be beauty reviews or it has to be about perfume because that makes sense. And I'm like, but that's not my passion. So like, why am I putting myself in a box, you know? So now I just said, screw it. And I'm gonna talk about many topics. Yeah, beauty, perfume, sure. But I also have like a hundred other things that I love so much, which I really wanna share. So that was something I was scared of because I was scared of putting myself out there by myself without Huda. You know, so I think it's really important to show that you're multifaceted, you're multidimensional as a human being. And that's yeah. why I really get offended when somebody says, Ah, oh, he studied medicine, he should be only a doctor. Why is he playing the violin? Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean he shouldn't yeah. play the violin. Maybe mm -hmm. he's also it's his passion, maybe he's also mm -hmm. good, maybe he wants to speak another language. Totally. Why are we boxing people and putting one nice label on them? Totally. Mm. And I think I did it to myself. And I think we do it to we ourselves it. sometimes we're even more than other people. Because I was putting myself in a box and it was making me so unhappy. Because I was like, I got to a stage where I was like, I'm going to shut my Instagram because it's not me. Like, mm. it's like, it's not the right reflection of who I really am. I was like, I looked at it and I was like, oh, if I looked at my Instagram and I didn't know who I was, I would not think I am who I am. Correct. You know, I was like, why is there such a disconnection and I was like because I'm, I'm putting out content I think I have to put out but why mm. you know I need to change it up a bit more and do things that are actually really meaningful to me and have a lot of purpose so that's something I'm actually doing good. I was scared I still am I'm still like oh I don't it's know good. how people are gonna go for it you know react and I don't know if there's gonna be any traction and I have a lot of work to do but I'm doing it now you know that's where I think a lot of the alone time is helping because I'm like it's forced me to be like, you've got to do this. Like the more I like, I'm like, oh, should I do this? I'm like, the signs are pointing me in that direction. It's like, find yourself, go, you know, you've yeah. got, if you don't share your passion with the world, you're doing a disservice. So it's like a lot of Oprah. <laughs> okay. Twist in this uh, question, but mm -hmm. it's a good way to think. Okay. If money is guaranteed mm -hmm. for life, yeah. for you and for generations after you mm -hmm. from your family, mm -hmm. But the condition is you have to choose a job. Mm -hmm. What job would it be? Um, probably be a life coach. Life coach. Yeah. Interesting. So you see, there's a lot to, in you to help. Yeah, I love helping. That's you like mentioned my Tony Robbins in the beginning also. I'm obsessed with him. Mm. Obsessed. Yeah, like it's a bit too much. <laughs> okay. Like I had the opportunity to meet him once and I, I declined. Oh, wow. Because I was too freaked out. I was like, oh, no, I can't. I'm going to get too nervous. I'm going to cry. I'm going to act weird. And like, it's just gonna be bizarre, but now I regret it. I was like, shit, I should have met you him. Will. I will, I'm manifesting it. You will. I'm manifesting it. I have a painting of him in my house. Like, that's creepy, but <laughs> yes. Yeah. With like other people, it was like with Oprah and yeah, like make it easier Obama now, yeah. and like other people, yeah. like There's leaders. There's 50 people also. Yeah, 
Mm. But it's a, a real obsession. But I love helping people. Like for me, that's the biggest feeling of satisfaction. Like in terms of what I do, it's like when I see myself. Like now, it's like what gives me the most satisfaction with what I'm doing right now. It's like usually related to the team. Like when I feel like I've helped someone in the team, like that just lights my soul on fire. I'm like, oof, just makes me so excited. Um, but I want to do it more on like a bigger scale. I want to do it with like impact for the brand. And I think we're doing it with Head of Beauty, but not as much as I'd love for us to. But I think on the flip side, that's why I'm starting my channel because I'm like, I want to do things that are just like more about like mental health and like I'm glad you personal are. development and stuff like that. Best moment in your life? My best moment in my life? Hmm. I mean, there, I don't feel like there's one moment, what but there's pops, like memories. What pops up? in your mind now? Mm, honestly, I think it's just when I was with my family, like spending time with them and eating. <laughs> okay. It's like the simple thing is it's not like a crazy vacation. It's just like the moments where you're with your family, you're all in a good mood, you're just eating good food and there's music on, there's sunshine. I like, I, my mind instantly goes to like moments like that where we had a barbecue or like even when I lived in Tennessee and like we went to, we'd feed the ducks like Usually, almost every weekend, we'd go with my dad and we'd feed the ducks and we just ate together. It's like something just having good food with people you love, like that to me is the best. Worst moment. Oof. <laughs> There's a lot of those. Um, I think that was like when I was going through hard times um, where I just felt betrayed by people or I just felt like, you know, things weren't the way I thought they were and I just felt hurt by some, by people. There's many times, though. Give me one without names. Um, I mean, obviously, there's been times in relationships where you felt betrayed, where I felt betrayed by people. Again, I don't want to single anything out. Um, but yeah, it's like you think you're, you think that you are like on the same path as someone. You think you have the same interests as someone, and then you just find out it's not. So that's like something where it's just like a wake up call. Um, and then there's been other times just with situations where you know people took advantage or. They were disrespectful, and I think, I think before I used to blame them, and I was like, why are they such horrible people? But now I think I'm looking inwardly, and I'm like, I blame myself, because I'm like, you allowed people to treat you that way. And I think that was another thing, just 2020, life-changing moment for myself. And also, like, end of 2019 was, like, when I just took extreme ownership of my circumstances, and I just decided that's where you really change your life. Because I always thought of myself as like this person who had like an inner locus of control. Like I thought I can, you know, I create my destiny by my output, you know? And I was like that my whole life. I was like, no, no, no. I'm like the most person who takes responsibility for everything that happens. But then I, I wasn't taking responsibility for the way other people were treating me until recently. And I was like, that was like a hard pill to swallow. And I was like, actually, I'm also responsible for putting up with crap. You know, and um, that was something Huda taught me because she was like, you're not taking responsibility for like being in the situation where someone was wrong or someone mistreated you or someone took advantage of you. And I was like, well, I can't can't control. I'm like, you know, in this with someone who's crazy or in this with someone who's dishonest. And she's like, yes, you can. And she's like, you've got to raise your standards. And I think that was hard for me because I, I think, A, I didn't I wasn't aware that I was allowing myself to put up with crap. And then B, it's hard to admit you're wrong, you know, because it's so easy to be like, oh, it's like I was in this relationship because, and I was done wrong because that person's not a nice person, but you saw the red flags, you ignored it. You know what I mean? Like you put up with this and you put things under the rug and that's why it built up. So changing myself to take responsibility for other people's actions has been a game changer for me and it was hard. Maya Angelou said, when people show you who they are, believe them. Yeah, and for the that longest the time I didn't. I think we don't do it even with people we employ mm -hmm. because they, you like the person. They're mm -hmm. funny. So yeah. you, you ignore flags. If you're yeah. in love with somebody, you ignore flags. Totally. You know? Totally. And I Friends, think I've known them. Let's say, I say, oh, I've known them for 15 mm -hmm. years, of course. And you forget mm -hmm. all the flags, but they're yeah. probably mini haters yeah. underneath, it, underneath it all. Totally. I think look, one, one uh, topic you mentioned, which I think is interesting, is because I can really relate. A lot of people took advantage of you. Yeah. Feeling wise. I think so. And took you for granted or oh, yeah. she's too nice or she's too naive. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's the impression yeah. you can give that I'm naive. Mm -hmm. uh, I look good. I am jolly. I'm happy. Yeah. And you can take advantage of me and I won't know. I won't catch you. 
think and then I... you have to show that you have a bad side or a tough side to you. <laughs> so I always knew, but I was just too loving. I was just too compassionate. Like when people did wrong things, I would always catch them because I'm the kind of person that you can't hide anything from me. I, it'll come in my face. Like it, it's not even like I don't even look for it. It just comes to me. But I would ignore it on purpose. I'd be like, oh, but, you know, maybe this is going on in their lives. And maybe I'd give excuses to people way too much, mm -hmm. like way, 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 way too much to where, honestly, it's not fair to myself. And that's where I was like, be more selfish, be more you know, focused on you because if you surround yourself by takers and you're a giver naturally, which I am, it's going to deplete you. Mm. So I was like, put my foot down, pay attention to red flags. And if I want to give compassion to someone, I'm going to give it to a baby <laughs> or an animal. I'm not going to give it to a 30 year old or a person who can own their stuff. But do you think, Mona, it makes us, if we become, we get betrayed and we're mm. let down, mm. that we become colder mm. and we think more, we're not as pure with our emotions or we don't mm. go all in because we're afraid mm. of past experiences or baggage etc i'm trying to think i mean i think that you definitely become less naive you have to be it's like you learn through experience and you're like okay i'm not gonna make that mistake again you know after every mistake you make so you definitely will learn more and you'll be more careful but I think you have to prevent yourself from becoming cold. And that's something that I strongly believe in. I'm like, no matter how many people hurt me in life, I'm not gonna become cold because I'm a loving person. And I think that if you allow someone to make you cold and you're a loving person, and I think we all are deep down inside, you're hurting yourself. Correct. But I'm just not gonna give love to you. <laughs> I'll just avoid you and I'll cut you out of my life. And I think that's fine. You know, it's fair to me and it's maybe the other person is sad, but. You've got to protect yourself and you've got to put boundaries and raise your standards, you know. Any regrets? Mm, I hate regrets. I hate the word regrets, but I mean a few, but yeah, I have a few, but I, I try not to think of them that way because they're just not healthy. Like I, I'm happy where I am and I know that if I did one thing differently, like I wouldn't be here right now, mm. you know. Part of your journey. Are there things I would tell people don't do this because I learned from it? Yeah, for sure. Last one. <laughs> Just save the best for last. Mona in one word. Mona in one word. Hmm. That's hard. One word only. Um, I'm a lover. Lover. Yeah, I'm a lover. I, I genuinely, I know it's like cheesy, but I like love to give love. Like I've always been a very like loving person. I used to call myself a teddy bear, but now I'm like, I'm gonna be a, a hard teddy bear. I'm gonna be a tough teddy bear, but I, inside myself, it's just so much love to give. Thank you. Thank you.